Big thanks to Lit RPG Reads and to Paul Bello, fine fellow, for inspiring this deep dive. You know this whole idea of cultural tapestries? Mm -hmm. um, it got me thinking about a campaign I played in a few years back. We were navigating this intricate city, like a real melting pot of different cultures, each with their own customs and traditions. What made it so memorable, it wasn't just the setting, but how those cultural nuances affected our interactions and decisions. For example, we had to carefully consider local customs before negotiating with a merchant guild, and even end up using cultural knowledge to solve a tricky puzzle tied to a local deity. It was a real game changer adding a layer of depth and strategy that I hadn't experienced before. That's a fantastic illustration of how understanding a society's cultural nuances can enrich gameplay. It moves beyond the superficial aspects of a setting and delves into the heart of what makes a society tick, their values, beliefs, and traditions. Exactly. And that's precisely what we're dizing into today with this article from Lit RPG Reads. Cultural Tapestries. How to Build Rich Fantasy Societies for Tabletop RPG. Instead of just skimming the surface, we're going to extract those golden nuggets of wisdom and figure out how you can apply them to your own games, whether you're a player or a dungeon master. The article starts by emphasizing why this depth matters. It's not just about creating a visually appealing setting. It's about weaving a tapestry of customs, beliefs, and social structures that breathe life into your world and make players feel truly immersed in it. It's like the difference between reading a travel brochure and actually experiencing a new culture firsthand. Mm. One gives you a glimpse of the surface, while the other allows you to truly understand the soul of a place. And that's where those emotional connections come into play. When players encounter challenges or make decisions within the context of a well-defined culture, those actions carry more weight and significance. A seemingly simple quest to retrieve a stolen artifact, for example, takes on a whole new dimension if it's intertwined with a culture's deeply held religious beliefs uh, or their traditional reverence for their ancestors. Right. The article gives this great example of a city-state obsessed with knowledge. Imagine a place where libraries are considered sacred spaces, scholars are revered as celebrities, and the pursuit of knowledge is paramount. Now imagine what would happen if someone dared to steal a priceless manuscript from their grand library. It wouldn't just be a crime. It would be a sacrilege that shakes the very foundation of their society. And suddenly, the players are not just retrieving a stolen object. They're grappling with the cultural and spiritual ramifications of that theft. It adds a whole new layer of intrigue and complexity to the story. It reminds me of that classic scene in Indiana Jones, where he's trying to choose the right grail, the consequences of choosing wrong. They weren't just about failing the quest. Yeah. They had profound spiritual implications. Exactly. So how do we go about constructing these believable value systems for our fantasy societies? The article suggests we move beyond simple labels like warlike or peaceful and dig deeper into the core values that shape their worldview. It's like building a house. You wouldn't just slap on a facade without a solid foundation. Those core values act as the foundation upon which a society's laws, customs, and even individual character motivations are built. Consider a culture that prizes freedom and independence above all else. Their laws might be more lenient, their social structures might be less rigid, and their characters might be fiercely individualistic, always striving to carve their own path. Now contrast that with a culture that values community and solidarity above all else. They might have stricter laws that emphasize the collective good, social structures that prioritize cooperation and shared responsibility, and characters who are deeply loyal to their families, clans, or guilds. Those core values create a ripple effect that influences everything, from the way they govern themselves to the way they interact with other cultures. And it provides fertile ground for compelling role-playing opportunities. Players can really explore those values through their characters' choices and actions. Will they conform to societal expectations, challenge the status quo, or find a unique way to navigate those cultural norms? That leads us to another fascinating aspect of cultural world-building, the environment itself. The article highlights how climate and resources can act as architects, shaping a society's adaptations, traditions, and ultimately their identity. We see this all the time in the real world, right? Think about the difference between a culture that thrives in a lush, fertile valley versus one that ekes out a living in a harsh desert. Their adaptations to their environment, their methods of survival, even their myths and legends right. would reflect those starkly different realities. The article uses the example of a desert society and their relationship with water. Their entire culture might revolve around water conservation, intricate irrigation systems, 
and elaborate rituals to appease rain deities. Even their architecture might be designed to maximize shade and minimize water loss. So how might a culture adapt differently if they lived in, say, a volcanic region? Would they develop elaborate rituals to appease fire deities? Would their architecture incorporate lava flows for defense? Precisely. By considering the challenges and opportunities presented by their environment, we can craft cultures that feel grounded in their world and truly unique. And that brings us to the heart of social structures and power dynamics. Whether it's a rigid caste system, a meritocracy where skill determines status, or a theocracy ruled by religious leaders, understanding how power is distributed and maintained within a society is crucial for creating a believable and engaging setting. Imagine playing in a campaign set in a rigid hierarchy where every aspect of life is dictated by your birthright, your character's social standing, their opportunities, even their interactions with others, would be heavily influenced by their position within that system. It's like playing a game of social chess, where every move is calculated to either maintain your position or climb the ladder of power. One wrong step could have dire consequences. Now contrast that with a society where power is more fluid, perhaps based on merit or individual achievement. In that setting, characters might have more freedom to pursue their own goals, challenge the status quo, or even rise to positions of influence regardless of their origins. That opens up a whole world of possibilities for character development and storytelling. A lowly blacksmith's apprentice, for example, might rise to become a renowned master craftsman, mm -hmm. or even a revolutionary leader, challenging the established order with their innovative ideas. Those different power structures create vastly different gameplay experiences. It's not just about who's in charge. It's about how those power dynamics influence the lives of everyday people and create opportunities for adventure intrigue and social upheaval. And speaking of everyday people, let's talk about economics. The article emphasizes that it's not just about gold and silver, but understanding how resources, trade, and commerce shape a society's values, priorities, and relationships with other cultures. Think about a society where a particular resource maybe a rare mineral or a unique agricultural product, is their primary source of wealth and power. That resource scarcity would become a defining characteristic of their culture, shaping their trade practices, their military strategies, and even their social hierarchy. It's like the spice trade in Dunry. Mm -hmm. Control of that resource dictated the fate of entire empires. Precisely. Now imagine you're creating a world where a mountainous realm rich in precious gems, but lacking fertile land, relies on trade with a lowland kingdom for their food supply. That economic interdependence creates a fascinating dynamic, doesn't it? Absolutely. It could lead to alliances, trade agreements, maybe even the occasional conflict over tariffs or resource control. It adds a layer of complexity that goes beyond just dungeon crawling and monster slaying. And it creates opportunities for players to engage with the world in new and interesting ways. They might negotiate trade deals, establish merchant guilds, or even become embroiled in economic espionage, all within the context of that society's cultural values and beliefs. The article also dives into the often overlooked but incredibly important role of religion. It's not just about temples and rituals. It's about understanding how different pantheons, origin myths, and religious practices influence societal norms, values, yeah. and even inspire quests and adventures. Imagine a society where ancestor worship is central to their belief system. Their entire culture might revolve around honoring the dead, maintaining ancestral tombs, and seeking guidance from the spirits of their forefathers. Their views on family lineage and tradition would be profoundly shaped by those beliefs. That could lead to some really interesting character motivations. A character might be driven by a prophecy revealed to them in a dream by an ancestor, or feel obligated to avenge a wrong committed against their family line generations ago. It adds a layer of depth and meaning to their actions, doesn't it? It's not just about completing a quest for gold or glory. It's about fulfilling a sacred duty or upholding the honor of their ancestors. And then you have cultures with polytheistic pantheons where gods and goddesses represent different aspects of nature war love, or even commerce. The stories and myths surrounding those deities would permeate their art, their music, their festivals, and even their daily lives. Think about how different those societies would be from a culture that worships a single all-powerful deity, their moral code, their legal system, even their architecture and city planning would reflect those fundamental differences in their belief systems. It's not just about slapping a temple in a town square. It's about understanding how those religious beliefs permeate every aspect of a culture and how they can be woven into the narrative of your campaigns. And speaking of narratives, let's not forget about the importance of family. 
The article stresses that family dynamics are about more than just lineage. It's about kinship systems, generational bonds, and how those relationships impact characters' responsibilities, obligations, and motivations. It's like that saying, blood is thicker than water. In some cultures, family loyalty trumps everything else. Characters might feel compelled to prioritize their family's needs over their own ambitions, or even risk their lives to uphold their family's honor. Now consider a society where individual achievement and personal freedom are prized above all else. In that setting, family ties might be looser, and characters might feel less obligated to conform to traditional roles or expectations. Those different family dynamics create a wealth of possibilities for role-playing. A character might rebel against their family's expectations, struggle to balance their personal goals with their familial obligations, or even find themselves torn between loyalty to their bloodline and their own moral compass. It adds a layer of emotional depth to their decisions and actions, making them feel more relatable and human. The article encourages us to think about how generational bonds shape a society's history and identity. Characters might inherit legacies carry the weight of past grievances, or strive to uphold the traditions of their ancestors. Imagine a society where oral history is paramount, and knowledge is passed down through generations of storytellers. Those stories would shape their understanding of the world, their values, and their sense of identity. It would be like playing a game where your character's backstory is not just a few paragraphs on a character sheet, but a living tapestry woven into the very fabric of the world. And let's not forget about the power of art as a form of cultural expression. The article reminds us that art is a language that can convey emotions, beliefs, and societal values in ways that words often cannot. It's like that saying, a picture is worth a thousand words. Think about how the art of a warrior culture, filled with depictions of battle and conquest, would differ from the art of a peaceful agrarian society, yeah. where images of harvest and fertility dominate. Those artistic choices reveal something fundamental about their worldview, their aspirations, and their fears. They provide a window into their soul. And it's not just about visual arts, right? Music, dance, storytelling, even craftsmanship can express a culture's unique identity and values. Imagine a society where music is their primary form of storytelling, their history, their myths, their legends, all passed down through generations in song. They might have wandering bards who are revered as living libraries, their memories filled with the wisdom of their ancestors. That would be incredible. Imagine trying to decipher a prophecy hidden within a complex ballad, or using a particular melody to appease a local spirit. It adds a whole new dimension to the way players interact with the world. And think about the role of craftsmanship. What might the pottery of a society obsessed with precision and order look like, compared to the pottery of a culture that embraces chaos and spontaneity? Would one feature intricate geometric patterns while the other boats wild abstract designs? It's all about those subtle details that reveal a deeper meaning and make a world feel truly lived in. Those artistic expressions provide endless inspiration for dungeon masters and players alike. They can be incorporated into quests, puzzles, character backstories, and even the descriptions of the environments themselves. And it's not just about creating static artifacts. Art can be a powerful force for change within a society. It can challenge norms, spark revolutions, or even preserve traditions in the face of adversity. It's like the bards in a fantasy world. They don't just entertain, they can shape public opinion, spread rumors, and even inspire rebellions with their songs and stories. Exactly. Art is a powerful tool. And understanding how a culture uses and values art can provide incredible insights for world building. The article then shifts gears to talk about technology, and it really highlights how technological advancement, or the lack thereof, can have a profound impact on the society's values, priorities, and even its conflicts. We often see this in fantasy settings, where magic might be commonplace, mm -hmm. but other forms of technology are less developed. It raises interesting questions about how those societies function yeah. and what challenges they face. Imagine a world where magical transportation is readily available but they haven't discovered the printing press. How would that affect the spread of knowledge and information? Would they have elaborate systems of couriers or magical communication networks? Or consider a society that has deliberately chosen to reject certain technologies, mm -hmm. perhaps out of fear of their destructive potential, or a desire to preserve their traditional way of life. It's like the Amish communities in our own world. They've chosen to limit their use of technology in order to maintain their cultural identity and way of life. Those choices create fascinating dilemmas for characters. How do they interact with other cultures that have embraced different technologies? Do they resist change? 
or adapt to the evolving world around them. It also opens up exciting possibilities for adventure. Imagine a group of adventurers from a technologically advanced society, stumbling upon a hidden community that has lived in isolation for centuries. The potential for conflict, misunderstanding, and cultural exchange is immense. And speaking of cultural exchange, the article emphasizes that interactions between different societies, whether through trade exploration mm. or even conflict, can be a catalyst for cultural evolution adaptation and sometimes complete transformation. It's like introducing a new spice to a cuisine. It can add a whole new dimension of flavor and complexity. Consider a society that has lived in isolation for generations, suddenly encountering a culture with vastly different customs, beliefs, and technologies. That encounter would inevitably lead to change, whether through the adoption of new ideas, the emergence of syncretic belief systems, or even the outbreak of conflict. Think about the impact of European exploration on indigenous cultures around the world. It was a period of dramatic upheaval, cultural exchange, and unfortunately, often violent conflict. Those interactions shape the course of history, and understanding how cultures influence and adapt to one another is crucial for creating dynamic and believable worlds. And finally, we can't talk about cultural world building without discussing language. The article points out that language is more than just a way to communicate. It's a vessel of culture a reflection of history, and a powerful tool for shaping thought. Imagine a culture where language is based on musical rhythms, where tone and cadence convey as much meaning as the words themselves. Or a society that communicates through a complex system of hand gestures and body language, where silence is as expressive as speech. Those unique linguistic elements add a layer of authenticity and immersion to a world. They challenge players to think differently about communication and interaction. And it can lead to some really fun role-playing moments. Imagine trying to negotiate a trade deal when you don't speak the language. Or deciphering a cryptic message hidden in a secret code. So as we wrap up this deep dive, yeah. what stands out to you? What nugget of inspiration will you carry forward into your next game? We've covered a lot of ground. From the importance of core values to the power of environment, the intricacies of social structures, and the transformative nature of cultural exchange. The possibilities for crafting rich and engaging cultures are truly endless. And we'd love to hear from you. What kind of unique society are you imagining? A culture that reveres the stars and bases its entire calendar and belief system on celestial movements. Or perhaps a hidden underwater civilization that has developed unique technologies and social structures adapted to their aquatic environment. Share your thoughts and ideas in the comments below. And a final nod to Paul Bello. Long fellow. Thanks for inspiring this exploration into the fascinating world of cultural tapestries. Until next time, may your dice rolls be ever in your favor. And may your worlds be filled with vibrant cultures that inspire endless adventure. It's like those stories where like a long lost civilization is uncovered and they have technology that's so advanced it seems like magic to the outside world. Or even the opposite, right? Like um, a society that has mastered magic, mm. but they've completely neglected practical technologies leading to a really unique blend of the mystical and the mundane. Yeah, exactly. And that kind of contrast can create some really compelling conflicts and challenges for players. Do they embrace the new technology and risk disrupting their way of life? Or do they cling to tradition even if it means falling behind? It makes you wonder, you know, what would happen if a group of adventurers brought gunpowder to a world where magic is the dominant force? Would it be seen as a marvel, a threat, or maybe even a sacrilege. It's those kinds of questions that really make cultural world building so fascinating. It's not just about creating a backdrop for your adventures. It's about exploring the complex ways that different cultures interact and evolve. And how those interactions shape the lives of the people who live in those worlds, mm -hmm. their beliefs, their values, yeah. even their destinies. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave you with a thought. What kind of cultural tapestry will you weave in your next game? Will it be a world of vibrant diversity? where different cultures clash and blend in unexpected ways. Or maybe a society built on a single unifying belief system with its own unique rituals, traditions, and taboos. The possibilities are endless, and the only limit is your imagination. So go out there and create something truly remarkable. And as always, huge thanks to Paul Bello. Longfellow. For inspiring this exploration to the heart of cultural world building. Until next time, keep those creative sparks flying day. Oh,